Handmade Carpets and Rugs Mixing natural fibres with beauty, ethics and practicality A CPD presentation by Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs We'd like to take you on a journey. It's a journey that starts with a management accountant called Richard. Like many management accountants, Richard didn't really want to be a management accountant anymore. Richard worked in the carpet trade, and one day a colleague showed him a sample of a hand-woven carpet from India that was both beautiful, tactile, and remarkable value for money. Richard was bowled over. He wasted no time. Within two weeks he'd booked a flight to India and ordered a container load of carpet, and so Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs was born. Displaying that sense of whimsy, for which management accountants are renowned, the company was named after the blossoming jacaranda trees that both lined the streets of New Delhi on that first visit and which reminded Richard of his garden back home in Cape Town where he grew up. Fortunately, Richard's wife Lucy shared his enthusiasm and together they've grown the company since as joint managing directors. As proof of their good judgement, in the seven years that followed, jacaranda carpets and rugs went from a spare bedroom to a garage to a farm outbuilding to a showroom in the design centre Chelsea Harbour. In 2009, the company exhibited abroad for the first time in Paris and appointed its first overseas distributor. Today, Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs offers luxury hand-woven, hand-tufted and hand-knotted carpets made in India and Nepal. We produce more than 130,000 square metres of handmade floor coverings each year. That's enough to carpet the pitch at Wembley Stadium 18 and a half times. From our head office and distribution centre in Desborough, Northamptonshire, we export to over 40 countries, including most of Europe, North America and Canada, Russia and the Far East. We were the first UK company to offer luxury hand-woven broadloom carpets in 5 metre widths and remain the market leader in terms of quality and innovation. Our Lyocell carpets come with an environmental certificate, providing a robust audit trail of where the raw materials were sourced and how they were manufactured. They, our Lyocell floor coverings, also come with a lifetime guarantee against moth damage, while our wool and wool blend carpets are guaranteed against moths for five years or until they're wet cleaned, at which point they must be reproofed against insects. We work closely with Goodweave, an international charity dedicated to eradicating child labour from the global supply chain, and submit our factories to their regular and completely random inspections. We have no minimum water value or quantity, all our handwoven carpet textures are available as rugs, and all our handwoven rugs are available in almost any size of your choosing. And we can colour match to an almost unlimited colour palette. We mention these points simply to lend credence to what follows. Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs knows this market, and we'd like to share that knowledge with you. So in this presentation, we'd like to address the reasons why you might specify handmade floor coverings, including the obvious ones, their beauty, texture and vibrancy. We'd like to demonstrate how handmade carpets and rugs are crafted, the skill and artistry that goes into producing them, but also the ethical standards and safeguards that you, as a responsible buyer and specifier, should insist are in place. We'll cover hand weaving, hand knotting and hand tufting, showing you footage of all three. That will logically lead to a discussion on different carpet fibres, mainly wool, viscous and lyocell, and a material that converts into the softest deep pile carpeting imaginable, but whose origins you may not quite believe. By this point you'll be utterly bewitched by the beauty and charm of handmade carpets and rugs, and quite possibly convinced that the only people who can afford them are royalty and celebrities. You may also be quietly contemplating the damage that your loved ones and pets might inflict on a delicate, hand-woven family heirloom. So we're going to surprise you by demonstrating just how robust and hard-wearing hand-woven carpets and rugs can be by flagging the British and European standards, independent tests and labelling guidelines that all reputable handmade carpet manufacturers should adhere to, but not all do. We'll also talk a little about who actually does buy handmade floor coverings and where different types of carpet work best. Finally, we'll round off by talking about carpet care and carpet cleaning generally and by listing the questions you should ask when specifying handmade floor coverings. So having introduced you to Richard and Lucy, we'll now show you what got them so excited. It was this. Handwoven, deep pile, 
wonderfully textured carpets made from 100% natural fibres with a gross power weight of up to 5,000 grams per square metre. That's one pound per square foot. To put that into context, the pile depth can be anything up to two and a half centimetres, or one inch, deep. Those sorts of pile weights are very rare in machine-made carpets and rugs, as the mechanised backing struggles to handle the weight. When considering the price, it's also worth bearing in mind the volume of yarn you get for the money. Handmade floor coverings are unique. Literally every carpet and rug is a one-off, in that it's very slightly different to the next. It's a part of their charm. We're not talking about quality control issues here, although more of that later, but about the minutest variations in texture that inevitably occur when every single strand is handwoven. As a result, there may be the tiniest variation in the pile height of a velvet finished carpet, for example, because all velvets are hand sheared. Or the stripes in a cut and loop or boucle carpet may not run 100% dead straight. This doesn't always appeal to everyone, and we should stress that we are talking about very, very small variations but we consider them features rather than flaws, and all a part of the carpet's inherent beauty. Typically, handmade carpets and rugs such as this will come in three textures. Plush velvets, chunky boucles and cut and loop. These examples have been handwoven and are made of either wool or lyocell, natural materials that lend themselves to natural colours, but that, in the case of the lyocells, can be colour matched to any colour. Paint, Pantone, RAL, fabrics or POM. Hand tufting creates this effect. Together with hand knotting, it puts the designer completely in the driving seat. Hand tufting and hand knotting allow you to recreate any design, in virtually any colourway or combination of colours, in any size, as either a carpet or a rug. Hand tufting is therefore particularly useful when specifying rugs for hotels and high-profile areas. It turns your floor covering into a canvas. To give you an idea how much effort goes into creating that canvas, each roll of hand-woven carpet will typically take nearly 210 hours, and that's nearly a month, to complete, during which time it will pass through at least 130 skilled pairs of hands. Hand knotting takes even longer. This sequence of slides shows the hand-weaving production process. The process starts with the yarn. These are so-called hanks of wool, and these hanks have to be transferred onto bobbins. Each bobbin takes around 10 minutes to wind, and a roll of carpet uses around 1,200 bobbins. The bobbins are then wound around a large warping wheel to create long threads or warp. This forms the basis of the actual carpet production process. The warping wheel takes at least four operators to wind continuously to ensure that no threads become entangled. Broadloom carpets are woven on traditional looms, four or five metres wide. Each loom is worked manually by three or four operators. It's quite physically demanding work. Warp and wefts are interwoven over metal rods by a traditional wooden shuttle thrown across and back as pedal-operated frames move up and down. The vertical yarns seen here are the warp. They're held stationary in tension while the weft, sometimes also called the woof, is the yarn that's drawn through, under and over the warp. The thicker the metal rod or needle, the higher the pile. These loops are then either left in place to create loop pile or cut to create velvet or cut and loop pile carpets. All carpets are then checked and any minor repairs made if necessary. The carpets are then stretched onto grippers and backed with latex. The latex shown here is synthetic, which has better elasticity and longevity than natural latex. It's worth noting that Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs is conducting ongoing research into more effective forms of natural latex. A strong backing material is then stretched over the damp latex and secured at the sides. 
This is important because it gives the carpet structural stability. Every roll is checked with any tufts, snipped and tiny imperfections repaired before the velvet carpets are sheared. Hand shearing creates that wonderful glossy effect we saw earlier. Because it's done by hand, as shown here, pile height can vary slightly between rolls. This may also mean that another light shear is necessary along the seams when fitting. There is then another check. In this case, that's Richard Meager, our founder and joint managing director, on the right. Of course, we also employ a dedicated quality control manager who is permanently based in India. Just a quick word about rugs, because in the hand-woven sector the production process is very similar. This is still the same factory and shows felted yarn being looped to create a boucle pattern. The edging is then hand sewn in the same yarn as the roll. Rug edging is much like picture framing in that you only really notice it if it's wrong. There are four main edging options as shown here. Hand sewn, blind hemmed, our most popular bespoke edging option, bordered, which can be in cotton, linen or leather, and whipped. Earlier, we mentioned the 130 pairs of skilled hands involved in the production process. Artisan workers, particularly in places such as India, China and Nepal, often find themselves the victims of quite abusive labour practices. Beauty isn't just in the eye of the beholder. Surely, it's also in the materials that are used and the way in which a product is made. When specifying handmade rugs, Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs urges you to independently verify that no child, forced or bonded labour was involved in the production process. Goodweave is a charitable organisation that was founded in 1994 by Nobel Peace Prize winner Kailash Satyarthi. It pioneered a monitoring and certification system that ensures that supply chains are transparent, that children have access to educational opportunities and that the rights of workers are respected. Goodweave works with more than 170 carpet and home textile brands including Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs, and has rescued and helped educate more than 40,000 children. As a manufacturer, when you sign up to the Goodweave scheme, you must submit to completely random factory visits and checks by independent inspectors. Provided you pass those inspections, your products can then carry a Goodweave certification label. We urge you to keep an eye out for this label. It signals that the product concerned comes from a child-free factory that adopts ethical labour practices. Buying Goodweave certified carpets helps to fund projects as diverse as daycare provision in Nepal, building a child-friendly community in India and homeschooling girls in Afghanistan. We mentioned earlier how hand knotting and hand tufting allows you to create any pattern in virtually any colour combination in any size as either a carpet or a rug and that it's therefore particularly useful when specifying rugs for hotels and corporate reception areas. To demonstrate why and how that's the case, we can quickly show you the process of hand tufting and hand knotting carpets and rugs, starting with hand tufting. Hand tufting is quicker, and therefore less costly than knotting, and can be used to create smart, tough, residential and contract rated floor coverings. In hand tufting, the design is drawn or printed onto a cotton backing mesh. New Zealand wool, silk or lyocell tufts are then punched through the cotton using a tufting gun, as shown here. The rugs are then backed with latex and secondary cotton backing, as shown earlier. Hand knotting is different again, although it offers every bit as much versatility and creative freedom. To see the hand knotting process, we're going to travel from India to Nepal. Here, newly sheared wool from the high plateau of Tibet is sorted and washed before being taken to Kathmandu Valley, where it's hand carded to bring the fibres together and facing in the same direction, ready for spinning. The wool fibres are then spun into yarn. These can be supplemented with pure silk yarn, 
The shiniest and best comes from China. The silk and wool are then blended to create hanks of yarn. You can also add banana and bamboo silk at this point for additional shine. The yarn is stored in hanks before dyeing. Dyes are very precisely mixed. The yarn is then dyed in large vats of hot water before being dried in the sun. It's then made into balls to make it easier for hand knotting. Design inspiration can come from any source, but we use CAD to create designs from scratch or recreate them from customers' drawings. The design is then printed out in graph format and painted to show each colour. The weavers then follow the graph by using different colour yarns to make knots around a metal rod and the warp. This is exceptionally skilled work. All weavers have to knot at the same tension and pace as one another. They sit side by side and count the knots as they go, following by eye the graph above them. On average, they will knot just 10 linear centimetres each day. When the row is complete, they use a hammer to knock the line of knots down and then a very sharp knife to cut through the middle of the row, leaving the cut pile once the rod has been removed. If they want to leave the loop, they'll simply slide the rod out without cutting. A weft of yarn is woven in and beaten down with a comb. The result is an incredibly dense, hard-wearing pile and, of course, also a quite unique carpet or rug. Once the rug has been woven, it's trimmed and any detailing hand-carved. It's then washed, surprisingly vigorously, to condition the yarn. Clean rugs are then dried in the sun over bamboo slats before being stretched for 24 to 48 hours. The edge is hand sewn in the same yarn as the rug. And then it is again inspected one final time before the Goodweave label and the manufacturer's own leather label are attached prior to shipping. So hopefully we've demonstrated how handmade floor coverings can deliver to you, the designer, a blank canvas with almost infinite creative scope. How they provide craftsmen and women with a decent living and an assurance that they won't be exploited. How they keep alive skills and traditions and how quality control is woven into the process at every stage of production. But just how robust are these beautifully crafted, ethically produced carpets? For that, we need to look at materials, testing and labelling. When discussing yarns, both the quality of the raw materials and the chemical treatments to which they've been subjected affect the way the end product looks, feels and performs. As we say in the handwoven carpet business, there are good yarns and then there are tall stories. So let's scratch a little beneath the surface of the most common carpet fibres used in this sector. Wool, viscous and lyocell. Carpets made from 100% wool are warm underfoot. They come in a huge variety of textures. Wool is a highly versatile, natural, raw material. It's durable, biodegradable, fire retardant, hypoallergenic and has excellent insulation and soundproofing qualities. Wool fibres are naturally coated in lanolin, providing innate stain resistance. Its disadvantages include cost, colour fading and susceptibility to moths. Wool isn't quite as stain resistant as, for example, nylon, but extruded nylon also stains. But if you want a 100% natural fibre that's luxurious, soft but resilient and practical, then wool is still the most popular choice. On the subject of moth protection, always check whether the carpet fibres are being treated at the dye stage, as opposed to being sprayed post-production. Treating the fibre when it's being dyed results in a far more durable moth protection. Lyocell and viscous are both derived from cellulose, or wood pulp. Unlike viscous, lyocell is then physically extruded. The advantage of that is that what's created has a more uniform chemical structure and is less reversible. Lyocell is therefore harder wearing than viscous. Lyocell was first developed in the early 1970s by the US company Enker. 
but was then refined by Courtaulds in Coventry and Grimsby in the 1980s, before the technology was sold to the Austrian firm Lenzing, who have continued to develop it since the early 2000s. Lenzing isn't the only manufacturer of Lyocell, but it is the best known. But to paraphrase a certain high street retailer, this isn't just any Lyocell, this is Lenzing Lyocell, otherwise marketed under the brand name Tencel. Tencel carpets and rugs have a lovely sheen and can appear to alter colour depending on how the light hits their surface. Lenzing won a European award for the environment for its work with Tencel, which only uses wood pulp sourced from certified sustainable forestry. It also uses an organic solvent called N-methylmorpholine N-oxide, helpfully abbreviated to NMMO, to dissolve the pulp without any chemical change. This is a closed loop process, unique to lensing, and it enables 99.8% of the solvent used to be recovered. The result is a botanic fabric that produces a rich, silky smooth carpet texture that has this natural shine and depth of colour. The pile moves when you walk on it, and it can be dyed to colour match just about any colour, be it paint, pantone or pom. Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs is an unashamed advocate for Tencel. As a carpet fibre it's both beautiful and practical. It can be professionally cold, wet, cleaned. It's hard wearing, up to heavy domestic class 23 rating, colour fast and naturally moth resistant. It also holds less moisture than other fibres, meaning that it will harbour fewer bacteria and it's completely biodegradable. A hundred years from now, landfill sites will be full of nylon and polypropylene carpets, but they won't feature any tencel or wool. Lensing is rightly protective of its trademark. It will only let a carpet manufacturer apply it after it has tested each carpet product and verified the supply chain. It then issues a certificate of confirmation like this one. This certificate is important. Do seek it out. Indeed, demand to see it if it isn't supplied voluntarily. Tencel is not made in India, and yet supposedly more Tencel leaves its shores than arrives there. Viscous is also derived from cellulose, or wood pulp, and is a form of rayon. Banana silk, bamboo silk and art silk are all types of viscous. Viscous is a perfectly good carpet fibre, but it has a few disadvantages. It goes crusty when you put water on it, and can produce a yellow stain, which means you have to clean it very carefully. Most viscous carpets only achieve a light domestic class 21 usage rating and are not very colour fast to light. But the main disadvantage of viscous is that processing it is relatively simple and therefore it can be made by anyone and often is. Production quality varies enormously. Some manufacturers use caustic soda, carbon disulfide and sulfuric acid in the production process and then don't dispose of that properly. So as a raw material, viscous is 100% natural, sort of, but if you want to ensure that you're specifying environmentally friendly floor coverings, you do have to dig a little deeper. The point being made here is not that wool or tencel are your only options when specifying handmade floor coverings. Wool and tencel do have qualities that make them ideally suited to luxurious and shiny deep pile carpets and rugs, but so do other materials. The point being made is, how do you differentiate? How do you determine which carpet will perform best in different circumstances and across time? The answer is that you ensure that all manufacturer claims are supported by independent tests, certifications and standards. Every reputable manufacturer of handwoven carpets should either label or supply their product with the following information. The example shown is from our Sitara range. EN1307 is the European standard that sets out the requirements for classification of all textile floor coverings and carpet towels, not including rugs and runners. The classification is based on practical requirements such as wear, appearance retention and comfort, or luxury use, as it's referred to. Sitara, which is a hand-woven thick pile carpet made from 100% natural fibres, is classed as suitable for heavy domestic and general contract use class 23 being the most onerous of the three classifications for domestic use, while class 32 is just one step down from that in commercial environments. The luxury use classes are numbered from 1 to 5, with 1 being the least and 5 the most luxurious. EN 1963 covers tests using the Listen to Trad machine. 
Note, EN 1963 has been superseded by British Standard EN ISO 12951 2015, but at present BSEN 1307 still specifies BSEN 1963 as the method. Also, EN 1963 has been adopted as an ISO method, BSEN ISO 12951. The two standards are therefore virtually the same. ISO 6356 2012 specifies a method of evaluating the electrostatic propensity of textile and laminate floor coverings. ISO 105 is the standard that's applied to colour fastness in textile floor coverings. B02 references colour fastness in natural light using an 8-point scale, with 1 being severe change and 8 no change to light. Each number on the scale is approximately twice as colour fast as the preceding one. X12 applies a similar scale to rubbing the carpet when wet and dry, and E01 a similar scale when subjecting the material to water, while BSEN 15115 applies to spilled water and, confusingly, uses a 5-point scale where 1 is severe change and 5 is no change. These standards are all explained on the Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs website. BSEN 13501-1 2002 covers the fire classification of construction products and building elements. The two issues being highlighted here are first that handwoven carpets made from natural fibres can demonstrably be both durable and practical in accordance with independent tests carried out to international standards by reputable testing houses. The hand tufted rugs shown earlier are contract rated. The second point is that all handwoven carpets should be tested to these standards and labelled accordingly, but many aren't. There's little comfort in specifying a carpet labelled 5 star if the body awarding the stars was the carpet manufacturer itself, but that does happen. So where might one specify a handmade carpet or rug? Each carpet's label and technical specification should make it very clear where one can place different types of floor covering. There are practical considerations, obviously, but in practice we've found that the answer also varies depending on the customer profile. So who buys handmade carpets and rugs? Among residential customers and users we have the Uber Wealthy. Often specified by designers on behalf of their clients, neither price nor practicality tend to be an issue among the Uber Wealthy. Ten cells, woolen carpets and refined hand-knotted floor coverings can be found in palaces, penthouses and celebrity homes. Among ten cells' wealthier clientele, its shiny finish and softness underfoot appear to be the main attraction. Ten cell is gloriously luxurious, smooth and tactile. That said, we don't recommend ten cell velvet pile carpets for staircases, because the thick pile moves around and because it may also flatten in the middle of treads or just outside shower rooms where wet feet may pass. But of course, wool is an ideal alternative in those locations. 100% wool carpets also offer a rustic charm. They're very warm underfoot, so are ideal for country houses, Scottish lodges and ski chalets. Undyed wool looks beautifully artisan and really complements the great outdoors. The next group is the comfortably off style gurus. They live elegantly and well, but on a budget. Rather helpfully, you'll find them among the sort of people who commission architect-designed renovations and extensions. They'll spend the money, but may want a lot for it in return. In those scenarios, carpeting is a cost-effective way of achieving a very high-end and personalised finish. Large, bespoke rugs can soften the acoustic and visual harshness of hardwood or stone flooring. This group will often hook in to a particular look and feel, so it's just a case of assessing their needs and managing their expectations if style trumps practicality. Have they got children, pets or wet feet? If so, it's best to confine tensile floor coverings to bedrooms, guest rooms and other low traffic areas. Woolen carpets may provide the best trade-off between looks and practicality, with natural weaves and textured carpets being particularly effective. Finally, we have the aspirers. Often, these are young professionals at the very start of their careers. They'll include solicitors, accountants, junior doctors and city workers. Their starting point may be a celebrity or ideal home type magazine spread. They love the look, they want the upmarket feel, 
but price is a potential issue. Rugs are always a good option here. Textureds and shiny Tencel rugs are very popular and can transform a small space into something quite unique and special. Natural undyed wools create a wonderful heathered look and for an average 16 square meter room the cost of carpet can be less than a thousand pounds while handmade rugs can start from under 400 pounds for a 120 by 180 centimeter rug. Aspirational buyers often respond well to conversations about cost versus price. While the initial price of a carpet or rug may be a stretch, the cost of that same floor covering over its extended lifetime, and the fact that it will keep looking good for longer, makes all the difference. It's also worth bearing in mind that a relatively high proportion of the price is in the underlay and fitting. Extra spent on the carpet itself makes surprisingly little difference to the total outlay. Commercial Clients Commercial clients will invariably specify via a designer. Handmade floor coverings appeal to a broad range of commercial customer, from those who need short-run or bespoke contract-rated floor coverings, often incorporating a corporate colour palette or branding, to those who want a statement carpet, rug or wall covering for a reception area or boardroom. We've discussed testing and labelling in relation to contract-rated floor coverings already. Handmade carpets and rugs can stand up to a lot of abuse. We wouldn't recommend Tencel for areas of high footfall, but for boutique hotel and executive office suites, it's second to none. Refined hand-knotted rugs can be created in any style, size and colour combination, making them a remarkably cost-effective alternative to a decent-sized art installation, for example, and every bit as impactful. Hand-tufted floor coverings offer similar creative scope, but at a lower price point. We'd like to briefly cover one final topic before summarising the main points we've covered today. Carpet cleaning and care. It's a myth that you should avoid vacuuming newly fitted carpets. In fact, the opposite is true. When any carpet is first fitted, it should be vacuumed regularly. Some fibre loss or shedding will be normal. It won't affect the durability or appearance of the carpet and it will soon stop with frequent vacuuming. For carpets with cut pile, you should use an upright vacuum cleaner with the beta bars turned off for regular cleaning they can be turned on to lift pile that may have flattened in high traffic areas. For carpets with loops in the pile, use a cylinder vacuum with a smooth nozzle and no beta bar. The simplest ways to lengthen any carpet's life are to not skimp on the underlay, place barrier mats by doors, but clean them often, use caster mats under all caster chairs, add furniture cups under furniture legs, rotate rugs regularly to spread wear, and lay non-slip underlay under all rugs. With the exception of polypropylene, most carpet fabrics, lyocell, viscous, wool and even nylon, will stain from everyday spills such as coffee and red wine, unless you act fast. So what should you do? First, don't waste time googling what to do. Instead, very quickly, pick up any solids using a spoon or blunt knife. Blot up liquid gently with kitchen towel or any other plain white absorbent paper. Keep blotting gently, changing the paper regularly until it comes back dry. Never rub or scrub. This can burst the pile surface causing permanent damage. Never add water to viscous or tencel. Viscous goes crusty and yellows if you do. If it's wool, do add water and blot gently with kitchen towel as before. Avoid home cleaning chemicals which may set the stain, damage the pile or leave a sticky residue prone to re-soiling. If the stain persists, the safest choice is to call in a professional carpet cleaner. Again, reputable carpet manufacturers will always be happy to recommend a suitable professional in your or your client's area. If the floor covering is made of wool, then we can also recommend the Wool Safe Wizard which you'll find at woolsafe.org forward slash stain hyphen wizard and which has a simple drop down menu listing different types of stain types and how to tackle each. The Woolsafe website also features short videos on how to deal with ice cream, coffee, juice and coke stains among others. There's also an app. That link is listed on screen at the end of this presentation. Some carpet manufacturers sell their own emergency spot cleaning kits. These are worth investing in because they would have been carefully sourced by the manufacturer to suit their particular carpet and rug fibres and characteristics. For example, 
When we set up our own network of cleaning partners, we soon discovered that one of the biggest problems they faced was customers trying to remove stains themselves, often using household cleaning fluids. They then cause even more damage and make the stain almost impossible to clean. We therefore put together a cleaning kit with chemicals specifically designed for natural fibres and with clear instructions, including advice on when to call in a professional, meaning that the customer was less likely to cause permanent damage. The kit can help with minor water-based stains, but if the customer has a big spill of hot coffee or red wine or something similar, then the kit can't be expected to remove stains completely. That's when you call in the professionals. At that point, they in turn should recommend dry extraction. Cold wet extraction cleaning is possible for stubborn stains on Tencel and viscous, but specialist knowledge is essential. In terms of stain resistance, Tencel is the best performing cellulose fibre that can be professionally cold wet cleaned. Tencel can be either wet or dry cleaned. Viscous fibres on the other hand are fragile and difficult to clean, so again professional dry extraction only is recommended. So what about stain proofing treatments? Well, they don't make carpets invincible. Prompt removal of spills is still key, but treatments can buy time and make stains easier for professionals to remove. Stain treatments should always be applied by professionals. Stain treatments on Tencel and Viscous require specialist expertise, and stain protection should always be reapplied after any deep clean. Always check your manufacturer's website for latest information and updates on cleaning. Our journey is coming to an end, and we've covered quite a bit of ground. We hope that we've convinced you of the beauty of handmade carpets and rugs, not only in terms of their looks, but also their artistry, their comfort and feel, their environmental and ethical credentials, and their surprising practicality. As a specialist manufacturer of handwoven, hand tufted and hand knotted carpets and rugs, we like to share our expertise, and we pride ourselves on being honest and open about the advantages and potential disadvantages of handmade floor coverings. When specifying a handmade carpet or rug from any source, we therefore encourage you to ask the following questions. What yarn was used? Are all performance claims backed up by independent testing to generic standards? Are your test certificates available for inspection? What chemical treatments was your carpet or rug subjected to? Do your factories employ child labour? How can you be sure? Are your factories inspected? And if so, who by? And how often? And are the inspections random? Do you have any certification to prove this? If the answers don't come quickly and naturally, ask yourself why. Thank you for your interest in Jacaranda carpets and rugs. It's been a pleasure spending this time with you. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us our contact details are shown here. Please also take a few moments to complete the questionnaire.